Tonight, we're tracking showers and storms bringing rain to our area. In two days, the San Antonio City Council is set to vote on the proposed climate action and adaptation plan. We'll tell you what you need to know. Plus an update on the site and release program now in place in Bear County. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming live from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Right now, tonight's Democratic presidential debate is wrapping up. 12 candidates sharing one stage in Ohio for this debate. The candidates sparred over health care, gun control legislation, and how to address automation. They also talked about the presidential impeachment inquiry. We'll have highlights from tonight's debate on the night beat. The next debate will take place in Georgia coming up on November 20th. Let's turn to the weather tonight. We have had storms across South Texas this evening. Right now you're looking at a map of power outages reported by CPS Energy. Right now they are reporting roughly 10,500 customers without power this evening. That number is going down. Always a good thing. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey standing by to get us the very latest on what is happening out there tonight. A lot of lightning out there, Sarah. Yeah, that's exactly right, Myra. And as we take a look at this video here, you can actually see lightning strikes off in the distance. I've been able to see them on and off again all night long. Other than that, it was still a hot day in South Texas. 93 was the high for the, the day. That's 10 degrees above average. But here is the main show. Here's what everybody is looking forward to. Rain. There were some severe storms out in parts of Comal County uh, about a couple of hours ago, but those have since subsided. Still, though, a lot of people in that northwestern section, northeastern section, rather, of Bear County, right on the Comal County line, without power because there were several lightning strikes that resulted in power outages there. As you can see, the rain is actually going to start filling in here for us in San Antonio who did not see the rain earlier. Very shortly, a storm out in Medina County working its way in from the east. For now, though, parts of Bear County that are getting a decent amount of rain right along that I-10 corridor, right at Loop 1604. So in Lotus, uh, areas like De Zavala uh, Road, closer to uh, places southward toward northern San Antonio and also the Stone Oak and Live Oak area getting a decent amount of rain, few flashes of lightning. Again, the severe weather threat with this system has just about gone away completely. We're not seeing any hail here. The one thing I would uh, mention is that there are some gusty winds, especially with this storm that's occurring in Medina County right now, moving to the east at about 25 miles per hour. The Hennis Hondo right along Highway 90 getting a good dose of rainfall. Again, I turned on the current hail size. You can see it's practically nil. We're not looking at any hail with these storms. Now again, this heavier bit of rain moving to the east going to make its way closer to the west side of Bear County. And as they turn on precipitation rates, you can see very clearly that some of these places are dealing with precip rates of up to three inches an hour. Now this storm is moving, so it's not dumping three inches of rain over where it's at right now, but still, these showers and storms are capable of producing some much needed drought relieving rain. And so some places have already received over an inch to two inches of rainfall. And that's a look at uh, estimated rainfall so far. Again, you can see the Stone Oak area nearly an inch and a half right on the Kendall Comal County line, about an inch and a half of radar estimated rain and just to the north of Holotus. Again, the north side of Bear County and the south of part of Kendall County have received the most rain of all of us so far yet. But again, this rain is going to be filling in. All of this is ahead of a cold front. The cold front still sitting in parts of North Texas, but coming up, I'll have a look at how much cooler will be tomorrow and what our rain chances are like as we head into the morning commute. Myra. All right, some changes headed this way. Thanks, Sarah. After thousands of comments and several events to get the community's take, the San Antonio City Council will vote on Thursday on the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan. That plan was first released in January, but since that time, there have been a few drafts and several changes. Among them, the plan no longer calls for having only carbon-free cars by the year 2050. That's meaning cars that don't have any carbon emissions. It also does not come with an estimated price tag for each strategy lined out in this plan, something critics have pointed to time and again. Tiffany Huertas takes a closer look at what this plan includes now. This nearly 100-page report details a handful of strategies to combat climate change in San Antonio. The plan says the goal is to make San Antonio carbon neutral by 2050, meaning that in three decades, the city will contribute to no net carbon into the atmosphere. 
But what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we don't produce carbon. It means that we have carbon as we emit it, we're also finding ways to sequester it. And that can be through a whole variety of different ways. One of those ways is working with CPS Energy on implementing their flexible path plan, which includes expanding solar and wind resources, closing two older coal plants, which has already been done. In the report, there are six mitigation strategies. Increase carbon-free energy, which means looking at energy sources that are less carbon intensive, like wind and solar reduce building energy consumption, and reduce transportation energy consumption. Advance the circular economy, which means minimizing waste and reusing what we can. Promote biodiversity and healthy ecosystems. Finally, educate and empower. David Turner, an associate professor of environmental science at St. Mary's University, has been interested in this report since it first came out. The education piece is important to us, and um, it's something that we work uh, with our students, and our students are very interested in this. From energy use by buildings to transportation, there are many topics Turner is keeping an eye on. So we have all manner of buildings, residences, uh, businesses, industrial buildings, all of these uh, city council buildings, city buildings, these all uh, consume electricity uh, to heat them, cool them, uh, you know, keep the, keep the lights on as it were. One solution the plan offers is developing a demolition and redevelopment policy to encourage the reuse of building materials. As for transportation improvements, Mayor Ron Nuremberg explained in August what that would look like. But a multimodal system is more than just mass transit. It's better a better bus network that operates more efficiently and more frequently. It's uh, safer bicycle lanes where people can feel comfortable riding their bikes. But how much will this cost? At this time, there is no estimated cost, which critics have attacked. But those who support this plan believe the cost of doing nothing could be far greater. Here's what Nuremberg had to say about how the city moves forward with a plan we don't know what the cost will be. What this plan does is lay out a process by which there will be public input, there will be cost-benefit analysis, there will be economic impact statements along the way so we can make sure that when we make a decision it's in the right interest, it's in the best interest of the community. I think there are real benefits from this um, and I think there's going to be very real costs associated with this as well. Turner says what attracts him to this plan is... At least as it's presented now, it's not a static document that now this is going to be the roadmap for the next 30 years with no changes uh, in store. And, you know, so is it ambitious? Yes, it is. Can we do it? Certainly we can. According to the plan, it will be reassessed and updated every three to five years from the adoption date. However, the plan may be updated more frequently upon direction from city council. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. The San Antonio Fire Department is in mourning tonight. Today, a 17 year veteran of SAFD was killed on the job. Greg Garza was responding to a call for an electrical problem at the Comfort Inn in Suites on Live Oak when he stumbled off the fire truck and was hit by a van. Garza is being remembered by those who knew him as happy, always smiling. Members of the community showing their solidarity with the fire department by creating a memorial outside of Station One where Garza spent most of his career. It's just support, you know, it wasn't just him and his family, it was, you know, his friends and everybody else, the community. It's a big loss for us. On Thursday, our KSAT community partners will be holding a phone bank in honor, in honor of Greg Garza. We'll have more information Thursday morning about how you can donate. An abrupt end to a murder trial today after the, the defendant agrees to a plea deal. Several teenagers hit by a driver who plowed into them and then took off. And a dog saves a Texas man's life after a chainsaw accident. This is tonight's Nine at Nine, a surprise plea in the trial of one of the teens accused in the shooting death of another teen over a backpack. David Samora suddenly decided to plead guilty as part of an agreement that will mean a 40-year prison sentence. Two of the other teens charged in this case are awaiting trial. A third has pled guilty to aggravated robbery charges, then as part of a plea deal will serve 20 years in prison. In Brazil, at least one person killed after a seven-story apartment building collapses without warning. A few people have been rescued from the rubble, but several others are still missing. Here at home, a man arrested in the stabbing of another man inside a hospital that was allegedly the result of a love triangle. Camila Madrano is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 
Four Massachusetts teenagers are doing okay after they were slammed by a hit-and-run driver. The kids were standing in a driveway when it happened. I hit off the other car. I hit off of it and then flew into like the garden. When the car was pulling out, it like beeped two times at us and then just like zoomed down the street. The driver has not been identified. A Wisconsin waitress loses her job after refusing to serve a couple she says disrespected a transgender woman sitting at another table. I'm asking if I thought it was disgusting and wrong and why we would let somebody like that in to the establishment. The restaurant owner says she was fired because she refused to do the duty that she was hired for. Actress Felicity Huffman has begun her sentence at a federal prison in California. Huffman was ordered to spend 14 days behind bars for her role in a nationwide college admission scam. She pleaded guilty to paying $15,000 in a scheme to boost her daughter's SAT scores. Huffman is the first of more than 30 parents charged in the criminal case to begin serving her sentence. A Texas man from Wichita Falls says his dog is the reason he's still alive after he was hurt in a chainsaw accident. The man says the chainsaw made a cut in his leg so deep it was about a quarter inch away from his bone. His dog ran up to him and the man was able to get up by holding on to the animal. And I was blessed to have that dog. I just, you know, I had to cry in my soul because that dog did, he saved me, he saved me. The dog barked, alerting the man's wife. She was able to call 911 and get him help. Donald Trump Jr. in San Antonio today. He's previewing the big Keep America Great rally that President Donald Trump is scheduled to host in Dallas later this week. Rescuers in Utah helped save a huge dog that got tired on a mountain hike. The 190-pound Mastiff was hiking with his owner when about two miles in, he laid down and refused to move. The dog was carried back down the trail on a stretcher. To read more about these nine stories, just go to ksat.com slash news at nine. Coming up tomorrow night on KSAT News at 9, it's a genre of music that a lot of South Texas families are familiar with, but you don't hear a lot of Tejano on the radio anymore. Tomorrow, we're exploring the history of Tejano music, its cultural impact, and its decline. That's tomorrow on the News at 9. There was still a lot more ahead on KSAT News at 9 tonight. We'll be back in just one minute. You might hear noise in the background during KSAT News at 9. You want to know why? Our set is right in the middle of the always busy KSAT 12 newsroom. We are just feet away from reporters, producers, photographers, editors who were all working to put together the stories you see here on the News at 9 and throughout the day on KSAT 12. This is the assignment desk, really the control center of the KSAT 12 newsroom. Our assignment desk editor keeps track of all of these police and fire scanners to make sure our crews are headed out the door to see what's happening and make sure you know what's going on all around town. There's the KSAT 12 defenders tracking down the latest investigations and our weather team putting together an up to date forecast to make sure you are ready for your day. Streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom is just one of the reasons this show looks and feels so unique and we're glad you're watching. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will not be holding a formal House vote on the presidential impeachment inquiry at this time. Pelosi making that announcement tonight. It comes after the White House and congressional Republicans have demanded a formal vote. The president has said that without that vote, the ongoing impeachment inquiry he feels is illegitimate.
We're not here to call bluffs. We're here to find the truth, to uphold the Constitution of the United States. This is not a game for us. This is deadly serious. The investigation into the president was launched after a whistleblower reported raising concerns about a call between the president and the president of Ukraine. In that phone call, the president pressed Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son. Here at home, the site and release program now in effect in Bear County seems to be working well so far. That's the update from SAPD Chief William McManus today. Site and release allows officers to issue a citation instead of immediately arresting someone for a handful of misdemeanor charges. McManus said that that's led to fewer arrests for things like marijuana possession and minor theft. It saved 900 hours of police time, according to the chief. That's since this program started in July through early September. The program is intended to keep people out of the judi judicial system who uh, made a one-time mistake. McManus said in most cases when officers did arrest someone instead of citing them, the person had warrants out or there were multiple charges against them. The chief says his officers can use their own discretion. SAPD is still working on making sure there's a record of who has been cited and released. Let's turn to some of tonight's top stories. Members of a British family are being held in federal custody after making an unauthorized border crossing. The family of seven says that they were visiting Canada and mistakenly crossed the border into Washington state to avoid hitting an animal with their car. They claim they've been treated inhumanely as they await deportation. According to U.S. immigration officers, two members of that family have previously been denied entry into the U.S. Yahoo could owe you nearly $400. Yahoo users can now file a claim for a piece of the $117 million class action settlement related to massive data breaches. USA Today reporting that if you had a Yahoo account between January 2012 and December 2016, you can get Get two years of free credit monitoring services or up to $358. That's including traditional Yahoo email or accounts on Yahoo Fantasy Sports as well, Yahoo Finance and Tumblr and Flickr. The deadline to file a claim is July 20th of 2020. Ancestry.com is launching Ancestry Health. This new service will expand its DNA screenings to test your predispositions for certain diseases and disorders. The tests will use genotyping technology to look for genetic risk related to several conditions. Those conditions include heart disease, hereditary cancers, and blood related disorders. The basic service will cost $149. Saving money can sometimes be difficult when you don't have a plan. And if you don't have a savings plan, you might not see the results you're expecting. So if you're looking for any easy way to save money, you might consider automation to help you out. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera has some tips to help you get started with creating an automated savings plan. In tonight's Money, It's Personal. One of the easiest ways to save is by setting it up to happen automatically whenever you get paid. Whether you're saving for a rainy day, a vacation, or retirement, once you set up automated savings, you'll be able to set aside money without thinking twice. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has some tips to help you out. First, an account at a bank or credit union is considered one of the safest places to keep your money. And your financial institution may offer programs that allow you to automatically move money from your paycheck in your checking account to a savings account. These are called reoccurring transfers, and you can set them up to happen whenever you want for any specific amount. The CFPB says you should be aware of your monthly income and expenses. Make sure to monitor your online account and you can set up notifications of your account balance to make sure you have enough money in your checking account to avoid overdraft fees. Check if your financial institution has a minimum amount for savings transfers and then adjust it over time as you make more money. The CFPB says you should consider the timing of your transfers, track what you owe and what it's due. Another way to save is by rounding up your change from everyday purchases. If you pay $8.05 for your meal, save those 95 cents to round up to $9. You can do this by using mobile apps or you can ask your financial institution if it offers that service when using your debit card. Lastly, you can save automatically through your employer. Instead of having your entire paycheck directly deposited into your checking account, 
arrange for a portion of it to go to your savings account. Ask your employer if it will allow you to split your paycheck into multiple accounts. Remember, even small amounts of money add up over time. For The Nine, Ivan Herrera. We have a list of those tips from the CFPB on our website right now. Just head to ksat.com slash news at nine to find them. And if you have any money questions that you would like us to answer, you can submit those right there at the bottom of that article. We want to update you on those power outages reported by CPS Energy after a round of storms we've seen here in South Texas tonight. Some really good news here. This latest outage map from CPS showing nearly 2000 customers affected right now without power. That is a big decrease from the over 10,000 we saw just 20 minutes or so ago. Let's get right to meteorologist Sarah Spivey with the latest on what's happening out there right now. Sarah. Yeah, Myra, there are still storms out there with producing a lot of lightning, so there is the risk of power outages throughout the next uh, several hours or so, but you can see that the showers are starting to fill in to Bear County. We have one storm out in Medina County near Hondo, uh, and then that's going to continue to push on off to the east, and that's why we'll be able to see more showers and storms working their way into Bear County here. Uh, but all of us getting some decent rain tonight. We need the rain. In fact, uh, many areas under severe or extreme drought, so this is all welcome. Again, it's looking a little bit like this storm is weakening as it's moving into Bear County, but there is still the possibility for light rain overnight, all because there's a cold front still yet to arrive. This is all just right before the cold front. Uh, and that cold front is right now in North Texas. You can see how temperatures are much cooler behind it. Amarillo in the 40s, Lubbock in the 50s, Dallas and us here in San Antonio still on the south side of that front in the mid to upper 70s. Laredo still at 90 degrees. So this front is going to work its way down south tonight and kick off some more showers. Uh, Probably right around after about two o'clock in the morning, we'll see more widespread rain. And then as we head into uh, the early morning hours tomorrow, looking at uh, some isolated showers, some light rain showers for the morning commute. So temperatures are going to fall pretty quickly with this front moving through as well into the 60s all day tomorrow. Again, there's a possibility, small possibility we may be able to get up to 70, but Generally, we'll spend most of the day in the 60s. So 60% 60 light rain in the morning hours, becoming more isolated by the lunch hour. Windy and cool with gusts up to 30 miles per hour, staying in the 60s. And then temperatures are going to stay pretty mild for your Thursday as well. Uh, but by the weekend, we'll be back up into the upper uh, 80s. If you have an opportunity, tune into the night beat tonight. I'll have an updated look at radar. Myra. All right, thanks, Sarah. She said she would, and now she's made it official. Michelle Barrientes Vela has entered the race for Bear County Sheriff days after she was removed as Bear County Precinct 2 Constable. Now, according to paperwork filed within the County Elections Department, Barrientes Vela has appointed a campaign treasurer now. She is the seventh candidate to file the necessary paperwork to run for the sheriff's office in 2020. The former constable was removed from office last week after she told KSAP that she planned to run for sheriff in late September. That announcement triggered what's called the state's resign to run law. That law says that elected officials who announce plans to run for another office with more than 13 months left in their current term automatically forfeit their seat. A new constable for Precinct 2, Leticia Vasquez, has already been sworn in. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what's trending tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, busy day, busy day, and a lot of people clicking on this Dave Chappelle story. So if you did not hear the news, Dave Chappelle uh, announced he had two more surprise shows. One is going on pretty much around this time as we speak, and he's actually going to have one tomorrow as well. And people have just gone nuts on our website this is and day on two social media. Of yes, the Chappelle in San Antonio <laughs> mania. Around yeah, here. yeah. So um, this has been pretty crazy. Again, this was kind of a uh, this uh, surprise pop up show, and uh, good on one of our digital producers, Mary Claire, because she was even thinking beforehand that he would probably set up another couple shows here in San Antonio. After he had just said, "Hey, we're going to do this one." Yes, yeah. yeah which she... caught everyone by surprise. So yeah, yeah she, she definitely thought ahead there, and um, there. yeah. 
if you guys want more information on this, because uh, obviously if you're maybe going to tomorrow's show, maybe you're still wondering about some of the rules and regulations with your cell phones, recording devices. Yeah, it's pretty strict. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So um, you can go to our website, ksat.com, and check out the very latest right there. So, all right, moving on here to story number two, uh, pizza. Who does not love pizza? I don't know a soul. <laughs> there you Who go. Who doesn't? <laughs> all right, well, we figured that. So we have put together a map of some of the best places to get local pizza here in San Antonio. So these are local pizza joints. Nice. Yeah, nothing chain, no Pizza Hut Domino's. I mean, I do <laughs> like those every now and then. But these are just some like really cool spots that you can take the family out and the kids. Pretty Very cool. cool. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah. have to check that out. Yeah, me too. I always kind of revert back to the chain stuff. So this list. Yeah, will be it's kinda always nice. so easy. It's such yeah. a known yeah. quantity, but <laughs> yeah. this will help you branch out. Definitely. Yeah, we have a map with each location there. So uh, you know, depending whatever side of town you live on go check it out awesome yeah. all right moving on last story here of the day and we are coming up with Spurs season right around the corner and for fans of the Spurs we have just released a new Spurs mm -hmm. newsletter he says overdone. we he yeah. means he this is RJ's <laughs> project we're excited um, about I've been working with the sports department yeah. on this one a little <laughs> bit so uh, some cool things you're gonna see here are player interviews so we have those we have different things maybe like pops soundbite of the day always got I love what Pop says. Yeah. Uh, we have some interesting takes from some of the sports guys, Greg, Larry, David Sears, who also covers the Spurs for uh, a lot of our digital platforms. So yeah, a lot of cool information on there on our Spurs. So how newsletter. do you sign up for this? Uh, go to our newsletter page. You're going to have to just put in your email and you will be good to go. All you have to do is click on that little Spurs icon when you get into that page. So yeah, awesome. we also send it out. Um, to different people on our emailing list and also you can find it on ksat.com. Okay, so all yeah. that information yes, I'm sure right there in that article. all there. Yeah, good stuff. Very cool. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thanks, RJ. Thank you, Mario. We'll be right back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. WeWork is expected to lay off at least 2,000 people or 13% of the company's total staff as soon as this week. That is according to The Guardian. Employees told The Guardian that little to no work is getting done and new projects have been put on hold at the company. WeWork is under pressure to cut costs following a failed IPO attempt. And Walmart is launching an Amazon key rival that delivers groceries straight to customers' refrigerators. Associates use smart entry technology and wearable cameras to get inside customers' homes, and shoppers can even watch the delivery remotely. The service costs about 50 bucks up front for a smart device plus a $20 monthly fee. And a drug that's critical to treating childhood cancers is in short supply after manufacturing issues at the sole manufacturer Pfizer. That is according to the New York Times. Teva Pharmaceuticals ceased producing the drug in July, citing a business decision, and Pfizer said it would expedite additional shipments in an effort to make up for Teva's withdrawal. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schiller from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. We will be cussing, using profanity, yelling, screaming. Something for everybody. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. That's all our time tonight. I'm Myra Arthur, and we'll see you next time. Good night.